Hey guys, Chris the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today it's Christmas because I got a new telescope. Uh, it's in this beautiful box here. We're going to do the unboxing and while it is fairly cloudy, we will probably be able to do a first test of the sharpness of the telescope tonight. It's an Ascar telescope, but it's very small. What can it be? Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a look. So, um, as you can tell, I will want to use this with my Pentax K1, which is now Astro modded. <laughs> uh, Pentax cameras, most of them come with a feature, come with a feature called Astro Tracer. Astro Tracer lets the camera sensor follow the stars for a few seconds. Typically, like at uh, at 50, 60 millimeters, you can follow for maybe 30 seconds to one minute. At 200 millimeters, I've been able to follow stars for like 15 seconds to 20 seconds without like seeing star training. So it replaces a star tracker to some extent. Um, I already have a Samyang 135 millimeter F2 lens. That lens is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, super sharp. Great. I love it. And it's for my Pentax camera. But I wanted something with a little more reach and also that that works really well on a full size full uh, size sensor and the answer seems to have been ascar I have a lot of people who ask me about this so let's get this opened and here we have the answer to all our riddles this is the camera it is the new acl 200 it's a 200 millimeter f4 lens uh, which sounds like, hey, you could just buy a 200 millimeter f4 Pentax lens. There are some old ones that cost nothing. I already have that. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, even for me, the stars are not good enough there. There's a lot of blue around the stars. It's, uh, it's not great. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. Sorry, I can see there's another box and the goal now is to remove it without breaking anything. Gets well packed. That's good. Uh, this is beautiful. I can't wait. Okay, we have two stickers at the bottom. And let's get this opened. Ooh, doesn't it feel good when you can feel the box slide off? Um, hmm. Interesting. So there's a whole user manual and a hex wrench. Why? Why is there a hex wrench with a lens? I don't get oh, oh. Okay, we have something that is really cool, which I've been looking forward to, which is um, a, a shoe on top of the lens that where you can put a guider or something like that. I won't need it for my camera, so I probably won't use it and it adds weight. It's pretty hefty, uh, but yeah, it's there and we have it available. Um, you can also put the, it's also good for the ASI Air if you have one. So for a very portable setup, that's pretty cool. It reminds me a lot of the Red Cat. And in here we have the pièce de résistance, the lens it itself. Ah, oh, this is exciting. I feel like, oops. I feel like a kid at Christmas. And no, I am not sponsored by SharpCap or Ascar for that matter. Uh, just so you know. Oh, this is big and heavy. This is bigger and heavier than I thought. Wow. That's like 10 times bigger than, I, than, I, than my Pentax. Wow. Would you look at this? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. So uh, we have an aperture ring here and there's a little screw there to lock it down. Oh, it's super smooth. There are no hard stops on each of the F stops. So it's like a very smooth kind of uh, mechanism. And we also have like um, a fine focus and a, a coarse focus along with the locking screws. But who cares about all of that? Let's open this. That looks like a telescope to me. It's like and then here we have an M48 thread, which means that you can absolutely use this with normal cameras, but also with, uh, um, but also with astrophotography cameras. This is heavy. This is heavy. I knew it, but it is heavy. And I love the um, leg here, the dovetail here, 
uh, because it has a th uh, the the big tripod attachment, three quarter. I don't remember the size. One fourth and and three eighth. So that's the three eighth, I think. And then it also has uh, one fourth holes in here as well. Four of the one fourth, one of the three eighth, which is great. It's um yeah, it looks like a, a very standard. Um, a standard dovetail and it's long enough i think it's longer than the dovetail that came with my sharp cap 61 uh, telescope so <laughs> it's easier to balance out things and to attach it to the camera i'll i just have a william optics m48 to pentax k mount adapter wow super smooth super smooth and then I am able to attach it to the camera and of course the dovetail itself can rotate around it's very secure this is this is much higher quality than the um, than the ring that I have on the sharp cap this feels so much better um, let's see can I lock it more strongly than that because it feels yeah that's good here we are and I can take those 200 millimeter pictures on the on the tripod without any star tracker <laughs> I'm gonna have fun with this oh man this is so cool now one of the reasons also that I bought this is because apparently you're able to uh, put a filter an, uh, a, a two inch filter inside which means that even from here I would be able to put like my Optolong L Extreme for instance and yeah I think that's it it's super smooth. The, this screams high quality. And there it is. I have an M48 thread here where I can put the filter, which is great. So we have a 55 millimeter back focus, just like normal focal reducers. And you're able to pull, put a filter inside. Or since we have 55 millimeters, there's also space to put, um, if you have like a, an Astro camera, a filter drawer. Um, but with the camera, I'll just put the ring on, the camera on, and I'll be done. This is so cool. Uh, okay, uh, no, the clouds have completely rolled in. So maybe not tonight. Um, so maybe in a later, so either later in this video, uh, <laughs> you'll see from the progress bar down there, I'll have a first light, or if my first light takes a long time uh, later. But man, this is so exciting. Like this is a beautiful, beautiful lens and I'll be able to put like the shoe on top if I want to, but for now I, I, I don't. Um, oh man, oh man. Okay, I'm not regretting buying this. This was uh, a bit expensive, especially for a 200 millimeter f4 lens, but from the reviews that I've seen, it's a great, great astrograph across the whole um, full frame camera sensor, which this camera is. Um, yeah. Guys, a miracle just happened. I bought this today and the skies are not quite clear, not good enough for normal imaging night, but there's a thin layer of clouds, but I can still see some stars uh, through. So that means that we can try this with Astro Tracer. Um, and first I am going to uh, focus. So it's kind of like one of the first times that I do that. Actually, it is the first time that I focus. We have two focusers. Um, there's one that will do the coarse focus and the other will be the fine focus and both have locking knobs so I don't know if I can zoom in okay and here I am I am zoomed in on live view you may or may not be able to see it but I see uh, small uh, donuts as stars and I'm gonna use the focus the fine focus aha interesting the fine focus has limited travel that's kind of defined by the main focus. So I really need to get close first with the main focuser, something like that, before I can use the fine focus and more so than usual because the fine focus has limited travel. So I kind of want to make sure the fine focus in the, is in the middle of its travel range when I reach the, uh, the point of best focus with the coarse focus. Now I 
don't have a bad enough mask still and there's unlike the red cat it doesn't come with a bad enough mask it would be so cool if it did but i will build one uh, soon okay and now i believe I'm, i've finished focusing so we'll just i move the camera to a slightly brighter star as well i will lock down the focus using the knobs that we have on here and we're going to take a 10 second exposure now at 200 millimeters without a tracker a 10 second exposure would be hopeless we'd get crazy star trails and i still think that maybe in the corners we'll get star trails Anyway, uh, but I'm going to try, because we have the Astro Tracer function in this Pentax camera, to take those long exposures without needing a tracking mount. The sensor will be moving to counter the rotation of the Earth. Uh, I'm on a timer, two seconds, so I'll make sure to stand still. Okay, we've taken an exposure. For now, um, I'm going to take that raw frame, we're going to process it uh, to remove the, uh, the light pollution and we're going to look at it on a computer. Okay, and we're back inside where we can look at the raw frame. So I actually took two pictures in a row with like one minute in between. One was a 10 second exposure, the second one was a 20 exposure. And this was done with, again, without a tracker using the Astro Tracer function of Pentax cameras on a full frame camera. And I've been told before that the corners can have issues with Astro Tracer. And so we'll see that what we get is not exactly a representation of the lens. It's kind of a mixture between Astro Tracer and the lens. Uh, so we can't draw conclusions yet, but I still want to show you because it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so the first image that we have is the 10 second exposure. And can we just like say how pretty impressive it is that it's slightly, the stars are slightly oblong when you're doing pixel peeping, but when you're like zooming out, you don't really see it. Uh, I, we need to appreciate how amazing Astro Tracer is because even 10 seconds exposure in light polluted uh, conditions without a filter, it's like enough to swamp uh, the red, red noise. And um, if we look at the corners, there, they seem slightly more aff affected in terms of oblongness by uh, the tracking, which makes sense. And all of the corners like this one it seems even like less affected. So what we're seeing here, and it's almost round stars. Um, so what we're seeing here, I believe is not issues with the lens. You can see the oblongness is always in the same direction. It's either tilt or it's Astro Tracer. And I think it's Astro Tracer. Um, and we look at the top left, we see like a lot of oblongness, like really the most oblongness we can see. And let's have a look at the 20 second long frame. We can see maybe a bit more oblongness in the top left corner and also top uh, bottom left bottom right top right <sighs> we can't call it yet we can't call it yet but it is like it, it confirms that for me even for full frame imaging this lens can be a killer and it is it doesn't have any halos that i can see it's completely unlike the Pentax, old Pentax 200 millimeter f4 lens. Right now I'm really liking this and I, I need to test this on a proper mount before I draw any conclusions, but you can still see the process and, and how I go through those raw frames. So it really tells me like, I could probably even do 20 seconds on Astro Tracer. I mean, the level of ob oblongness is something that I can live with if I'm taking images from like the top of a mountain without uh, needing to bra bring any tracker, mount, battery, or any of that stuff. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. This is so cool. Um, yeah, I'll do more tests, but yeah, you can tell I'm excited. Um, yeah, so with that, I hope this was an interesting video into this lens that I think is like getting a lot of attention uh, because it's really made for astro, but you, you can using during, use, it, use it during the daytime. There's a diaphragm, you can take, change the aperture, but it's really cool to have those uh, focus stoppers and aperture fo uh, stop, stopper nubs. It's really made for astrophotography. And right now I'm like, this is so cool. It's really well built. It's a bit too heavy for my taste, but it's really built like a tank. 
I'm gonna have a good time with that. Okay, with that, it's pretty much what I wanted to cover with, uh, with you guys today. Um, so if you like this video, um, feel free to go down below, click the like. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you like this kind of stuff about astrophotography, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, the bell icon, and leave a comment as you like. But more importantly than that, never forget to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.